So as I mentioned in my previous video, on this day of my travel diary series, we plan to visit Madawoka Castle, which is actually one of only 12 remaining original heritage castles in Japan. So not long after breakfast, we took a drive to head to Madawoka Castle, and fortunately for us, the weather was really nice on this day as well. When we arrived, Madawaka Castle seemed to be quite well hidden. We were only really able to see just the top of the castle from where the parking lot was. Also, one thing I didn't film but I did take some photos of was actually the restroom in the area, as well as the public phone. I think they did a really good job in making these look kind of old and making them fit in with the overall aesthetic of the area. And again, like many places in Japan, even the drains here were actually themed after Madawaka Castle. Just before heading up to Madawoka Castle, there was also a map of the area. The garden surrounding Madawoka Castle was really nice, and there was also quite a lot of sakura trees as well. So if you ever come here in early to mid-April, you may very well get to see roughly 400 cherry blossoms blooming around Madawoka Castle, which is something I definitely hope to see one day. So to walk and have a look around the outside of Madawoka Castle is completely free. However, if you want to go inside, there is a small fee of roughly $4 per person. Although the tickets did also come with these really cool cloth bookmarks as well, which was a nice little surprise rather than just getting a standard ticket. Now, Madawoka Castle looks really amazing from the outside. And depending on when you come, on some nights they actually do an illumination of the castle. There was a lot of nice things to see around the castle, but we decided to start by heading in. And the stairs leading up to the entrance of Madawoka Castle were pretty steep. So the wooden structure inside Madawoka Castle is actually preserved and unfinished. And on the first floor here, they did have some photos hung up of some of the other original heritage castles. I would really love to try and plan a trip one day to go around and visit all of these locations. I think it would be absolutely amazing. They also had this map here of all of the remaining heritage castles. Towards the back of the first floor, there was also this diorama of what the surrounding area looked like back in the 1600s. I really enjoy coming to old places like this. I find it so amazing how they managed to build such structures all those years ago. So I mentioned earlier that the stairs leading up to the entrance of Madawoka Castle were quite steep. Although they had nothing on the stairs inside Madawoka Castle that went up to the second and third floors. Just look at these stairs. Any steeper in these are basically just ladders. So the second floor
floor here was relatively empty, which I actually liked, as it just allowed you to focus on the structure of the castle. Which actually brings me to a really interesting fact about Maruoka Castle. So the second and third floors aren't actually directly attached to the first floor. Rather, they're just sitting on top of it. Now, other than the incredible view that you can see from this window, you can also see that the roof tiles here are actually made of stone. Now, these stone tiles, coupled with the wooden structure, means that a little over 100 tons is just sitting on top of the first floor. I just found that really interesting when I found that out. But seriously, the view from up here was absolutely incredible. that lead up to the third floor, I'm pretty sure are actually steeper than the ones that came up to the second. And the view from up here was just as amazing. Fukui really is such a stunning place. Heading back down these stairs was actually way more challenging than going up, especially when you're trying to film at the same time. the castle was what these small holes here are actually used for. So these were actually used for shooting arrows out of as well as poking spears through for anyone attempting to climb the castle. So after we were finished looking around the inside of Maruoka Castle, we took a walk around the castle grounds. One thing I don't know, and I haven't looked up because I kind of like the mystery of it, is how they actually managed to lay all this stonework and then build a castle on top of it. In this photo here, you can see it's not really just an angle, but it almost curves up. And they're layered as like one big stone and then two small stones. I just find it really interesting and have no idea how they managed to do it. So you can see all these lanterns along the path around Meadowalker. Now, my wife actually said that these had messages on them that were written by people. Now, I'm not really too sure what any of these said because my kanji knowledge is pretty bad, but it's steadily improving. The path around Matawaka Castle really isn't too long. You can easily walk around the whole area in probably less than half an hour but it really was a peaceful, relaxing walk. The area really is just so nice here. 
I could just imagine how incredible this area would look during cherry blossom season. Just next to Madawaka Castle, there was this gift store and a sit-down restaurant. So we decided to look around the gift store a little bit before sitting down for lunch. Now, somehow I did completely forget to film what was actually inside the gift store. Although, I did remember to actually film what we ate this time. So we ended up getting this really amazing soba. And it was actually incredibly cheap as well. For both me and my wife, it only cost maybe 10 to 15 dollars. And after lunch, we decided to head back for another early day. Now there was just one more thing that I filmed on this day. So a little bit later in the evening when we were taking the garbage out, the sky here in the countryside looked absolutely incredible. I really can't get over just how amazing the countryside is here. And that was our day. So in the next episode of my travel diary, I'm actually going to be doing something just a little bit different. So on this next day, my wife actually had some errands to run. So I decided to stay in and filmed a house tour of my in-laws amazing house in the countryside of Japan. So I'm actually really excited that I got the chance to make this house tour video. My father-in-law had a lot to do with the design of this house and he's really proud of it. Anyways, again, please let me know your thoughts and opinions on today's video in the comments below. And if you like this video, please show me by hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.